Revely, Revely. All hands heave out. Revely. Good morning. The first thing I do every morning when I get up is I start my coffee and then I go outside to release the chickens. So as my coffee is being made, the chickens will go free. Sometimes I add feed to their feeder if they don't have any and water, but I did that all last night, so it should be okay. All wings on deck. I had to go back and get them a little bit of scratch feed and here it is I give them scratch feed twice a day and the mealworms and crickets the dry stuff once a day so three times a day they get a snack and <laughs> yep like clockwork they're waiting sometimes I'll call them but not today they expect it now It's a few hours later and happy 4th of July to everyone. I'm gonna give you a garden tour, but before I do, I'm gonna harvest my Swiss chard and kale, cause my wife is about to leave and she's gonna make me a smoothies for lunch. And then after that, I'll give you a tour. Hey guys, this Swiss chard and kale is just amazing. I'm gonna cut a few leaves from every plant. I have enough kale right now. And I have lots and lots of Swiss chard. Wow. More than we need, by the way. 
but that's a good problem to have. I'd say it's an excellent problem. Everything here is growing wild. It's growing fast. And it's only July 4th. And there we go, guys. I have more than I need for today. And there's still more there that I can use every day for green smoothies. So let me take this to my wife before she goes. So I had to put some easy off on my neck and arms because we have some flies that uh, bite here. I don't know if they're flies or what have you, but they look like flies, but they're thin and elongated and they're, they're kind of aggressive up here. And one of them bit me on my neck. But anyway, I'm gonna give you a garden tour and we're gonna start with pigeon peas or gandules. I planted this about a week ago and they're all doing fine. Only one plant died, just one. And look at this. They are, I see new growth on all of them. You see that? That was in there five days ago, five or six days ago. So they're doing well. I do keep them watered. I water every two days. And only in the beginning, I have a feeling that in about a month or so, I don't have to, well, maybe in about three weeks or so, I don't have to water again. Cause here it does rain a couple of times a week. Those are my Peruvian corn. They're doing okay too. And here we have my herb garden. Everything's doing well here and growing. Now yesterday, my friend, the baby rabbit, was uh, standing right over there and I sat here and I just watched them for a couple of minutes. So I'm checking out my plants and my little friend Bugs Bunny is here. He's a little baby rabbit that lives under my shed and what is he doing here? I don't know maybe he's, he's eating some of my uh, tomatoes who knows. Yeah I'm gonna call him Bugs Bunny. He's just staring at me. He's not moving. I guess I'm about 10 feet, 12 feet away from him at most. All right, and these are some of my tomato plants and my peppers. The six here are my jalapeno peppers and these are King Arthur peppers. The King Arthurs, check them out. They have quite a few already, and this as well. I saw a couple of, yeah, here's a jalapeno. Here's another jalapeno right there. Yeah, these are doing well. Well, everything here is doing well. And you saw me cut my Swiss chard and kale a few minutes ago, and that's doing excellent. We have more than we can handle. Right now, I have six of each. Here are more King Arthur peppers. Yeah, this one's pretty big and my super hot this is ají amarillo from Peru and here I have what do I have Carolina Reapers they're kind of small yet and these are my dragon's breast they should be producing something sometime next month in August and here we have my butternut squash here's one right there See that? Now the butternut squash, the plant itself does not grow as big and long as the acorn from what I can see. That's the acorn out there, but that's out of control. But that's, it's a good problem to have. Everything here is growing super fast. My potatoes, my dahlias, those are flowers and my, my garlic over here. Only three, only three garlic. And this is my acorn, check them out. They are definitely out of control. Oh my God, look at this. I see one here, the, a big one. Two, wow. And as I said previously in one of my other videos, I love acorn squash, my favorite of all of them. There is a yellow one here. This one's gonna die. And I'm gonna get to that in a second. There we go, cabbage, red cabbage. My flowers, red cabbage. Now it looks like my acorn squash is gonna overtake everything. I'm trying to make it grow up the trellis 
and I have been tying it off to the trellis a little bit and I'm gonna try and tie it off more today. All right, these are cherry tomatoes. Are there any tomatoes in here? Yeah, there's some at the bottom there. Oh, right here, right there, cherry tomatoes. And these are my Roma tomatoes. We got quite a few already. Some Marzanos right there. There's a whole bunch. And my celebrity tomatoes. Wow. They're loaded. All my plants have celebrity tomatoes as well. How long before they're big enough to harvest? Maybe two more weeks. Then after that, it'll be almost daily. But I'm happy with what I have here. You know, the soil up here is very fertile and i do have to mention one thing that the compost i got from a local company apple orchard they are excellent it had no weeds and everything grows very nicely i got lucky up here in upstate new york the soil is outstanding this i'm happy with this acorn squash and there should be quite a few more here somewhere yeah there's a couple more there's more here Ah, oh, there's another one down there. All right, guys, so let's go back to this acorn that was yellow. Now, when you see an acorn, right, that's yellow, it does not mean, and this is dead, this died. This does not mean that there's anything wrong with your plants, okay? The reason why they turn yellow is because your acorn was not pollinated. The flower at the end of the acorn right here, that's dead, it's dried, it was not pollinated so how do you how do you take care of that how do you fix that issue okay i'm going to show you 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 need to pollinate them yourself now here i haven't noticed a whole lot of bees and that could be the cause but i am pollinating them by hand the ones that i catch so this is what i do i look for a male flower like this one right there right you know it's a male flower because it has a long stem you see that if it was uh, a female flower, it would have an acorn at the other end. You see that flower attached to that acorn? That's a female flower. So you need to pollinate this female flower, or well, not right now, when it's open and big, with a male flower. So how do you do that? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to take this fe uh, male flower off. And you see that? What do they call that at the, at the bottom? Let me let me tear this up. You see this right here? This is how flowers are pollinated. The bees are supposed to come inside this flower and they rub against that right there, the male flower part. Then they fly to the other to the other flower, the female flower, and they pollinate it. But I'm gonna do it by hand. So this is what I'm gonna do. There's a female flower there. You see that it's different. It's really big. So I'm gonna take this one male flower and I'm just gonna rub it right around the female flower like that, okay? Spread the pollen from the male to the female and then you're guaranteed to have an acorn, acorn squash. You're guaranteed to have success with that one. So this acorn right back here, you see that? It's gonna grow to be a big nice squash here yeah, i lost a couple more because they weren't pollinated here's another one right there see that it's yellow but there is nothing wrong with your soil if you ever see that it's just that it hasn't been pollinated i'm gonna do another one back here so again look for those male flowers tear back the leaves and do exactly what i'm doing now and you will have success all right, so this particular tomato plant is a Cherokee purple that I bought online. And what I'm going to do, you see this stem right there? I'm going to tie it to this pole using this clip that I bought on Amazon. I bought 200 of them for just a few dollars. First, I'm going to take out any suckers. And with one hand, let's see if I can do it. There we go, that's it. Let me take this sucker out too. That way it can keep growing up the pole. 
and I'm gonna do that to all my tomato plants and cucumbers and squash oh and by the way I saw some cucumbers here just a minute ago now these are my acorn squash to the left and I have a couple of cucumbers here here's one see that baby cucumber and I'm gonna tie this one right here to the trellis and I'm gonna take another clip there we go and now we can go up the trellis up to the other side okay and I'm gonna do the same thing with that uh, the acorn squash are they're huge it's kind of like a problem, but that's a good problem to have, like I said earlier. Everything's growing crazy. Everything's growing wild here. But I love it, let me tell you. I love this, this garden. And especially when I see them like this, wow, I'm impressed. Yep, I better learn how to make a arroz con gandules because it looks like I'm going to have lots of them later this summer. All right, guys, so this is the smoothie. My wife just made it for me with uh with the swiss chard and kale and she added some fruit right maria you added some fruit yes uh frozen bananas and mangoes oh mangoes and frozen banana mm -hmm. so she washed it and she made a smoothie out of it so we have enough here for a bunch of other smoothies and and the plants outside are growing like wild salud and do you remember that peruvian squash zapallo macre only two seeds grew or germinated. Let me show you. They're right here. So we're gonna plant that now. But before I plant them, I wanted to show you this. This was all forest just a few days ago. And I came in here and cleaned it up a little bit. I still have a little bit more to clean up around the front and back here, but look how nice it is. Now the soil here is so fertile that if you let it go it wants to turn into a forest so what i'm going to do is obviously i'm going to shred all that stuff all those uh pieces of wood and branches that i have and i'm going to use this as maybe a place to do a barbecue i have a gum range here too let me show you some of you have seen that before there we go all the way down there there's a mound of dirt and wood right behind it so you know to catch bullets and there are hundreds if not thousands of bullets back there because the previous owner he want he liked to uh shoot and there's my wife she's going out over to the health food store in saratoga springs bye honey <laughs> oh she's happy especially when it comes to shopping uh i didn't say that by the way but uh yeah some of you guys know right um so yeah, this is a nice place where I can set up uh, some chairs. I may have to get a, a bench, a new bench, or maybe try and fix that one. You know, it looks, if I clean all this stuff out, it might be good enough. So I might, I may cut back some of these shrubs. I have way too many shrubs here. I wanna make this look presentable. I wanna cut some of the uh, lower hanging branches off these trees, clean this up a little bit, make it look nice. Now that tree over there, I cut some of the branches, lower branches, and look how nice that looks. So I'm going to do the same with some of these trees and trim them. And what I mean, right now I have two trees next to each other. Now this one looks like it's almost dead. That one looks almost dead. So I may cut it and I can use the wood for my boiler in the winter. But right now I have way too many trees close together. So all the dead ones, I'm going to chop off. All right, guys. So I decided that I want to plant them right here in this high spot next to the loader and to my trailer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back the grass a little bit. I'm going to get the trimmer and lower it, uh, lower the, uh, the grass, that is. Or maybe I should get my lawnmower. Hmm. I think the lawnmower may be easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow them going that way. And hopefully in about three, four months, we should have gigantic Peruvian squash.
Okay guys, so what I did, I said trim back the grass a little bit and now I'm ready to plant my, my squash. I'm gonna plant them maybe two feet apart and then grow them going that way. All right guys, so yeah, here, here it is. I dug two holes, now the soil here very rocky. I am on top of limestone. This entire area has a lot of limestone underneath. That'll be okay. This is just a test. It doesn't matter. I think it'll grow just fine. So I'm gonna add a little bit of compost. So I've added a little bit of compost. I'm just gonna mix it in with a native soil. And just Go ahead and plant it. The same with the other one. All right guys, so now what? I need to protect these plants somehow because we have deer and other animals that go by every single day. Now, for example, yesterday I saw deer, a uh, small deer that came by from the back of our house to the front over by the coop in the morning and again I saw them late in the afternoon over there and I recorded a little bit with my phone and you can see that the chickens they gather on the side where the deer is because they're very very curious anytime they see a squirrel a deer a fox a raccoon they get curious and they go over by the by the to the side of the fence wherever the animal is and they're like looking you know but at least the raccoons and the foxes can't get in. Even though they do go by every day, they can't get in because I have an electrified fence. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of agua and I need to keep them moist for like a week until the roots establish. Here in, uh, in upstate New York, it rains quite frequently. And I'm also gonna protect them for now, for the next week or two with this chicken wire and T-post that I'm gonna put around them to keep the large animals from eating the leaves or just yanking them out because they're gonna be curious. Once they see something new, they're gonna to wanna to taste it. All right guys, so I can't use the T-post. I have too much limestone underneath. That's as far as I go, right there, just a couple of inches. So I'm gonna to have to take a chance. I'm gonna to have to leave them as is, take a chance that no one's gonna eat them tonight or tomorrow. All right guys, so this is all I could think about. A few logs that I use for my boiler to burn in the winter and scrap chicken wire. Yeah, and then I went ahead and put a couple of staples on the corners here to prevent the rabbits from pulling it back. Will they? I don't know, but they may. So that'll protect them for I'm guessing maybe two weeks and once they're long enough, I'll just take it out and let them grow that way. I haven't checked my mail in days and that's where I'm headed now. But to get to my mailbox, I have to walk through the forest. So how's your 4th of July weekend coming along? I am recording this Sunday, the 3rd of July, because I want to have this video ready tomorrow morning on the 4th at 8 o'clock. I need to upload it tonight. So in my case, I've been taking it easy. I've been working around the house with the chickens, the land, cleaning up a little bit. I have a ton of work to do. I could probably be busy every day for weeks, months, and years if I wanted to. I have a lot of projects, a lot of things planned for this land, and I'm taking it slowly but surely. Now this land I'm clearing for a project that I'm doing, and it should be done, or should be completed in about two months. So I still have a little bit more to clean back there. I ordered a wood chipper that I'm gonna use to chip all those branches and all those branches that I have laying all over the property. So yeah, so the wood chipper's gonna come in in about a week, week and a half. 
and but before then I should have all this cleared and a lot of these uh, stumps I gotta take out you know stumps for, for brushes and small trees I, had to, I gotta clear this out I have a tiller coming as well so yeah lots of work but it's all fun I love doing this kind of stuff and this is this property by next year it's gonna look real nice I mean it's already taken a few changes oh what a beautiful day and check it out if I call them look they're running towards the gate already so I'm about to feed them with a snack three are at the gate and once I make my call they're all gonna start running check it out beep 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 you see that they're running <laughs> beep 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 there we go guys oh they know that call you want your feed you want your snack oh yeah they're beautiful and big they're getting big beep, 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 beep. Hey guys, this is a nicer brown. This is Lila, and she's gonna start laying eggs later this month, the month of July. Maybe early August, but I think they're almost ready. Now, El Guapo, he can't lay any eggs, neither can El Jefe. Now, the black Australorps, like this one, they're gonna start laying in September, maybe early October. The black Australorp. Now I have one female Wyandotte. It's, she's over there. She's going to start laying in October as well. Now the Barnevelders, like this one, and Mala and Cara, they're not going to start laying until November, December, or as late as January. They take the longest. Now you probably noticed Mala and Cara, I put like a red thing in front of their faces. That's to stop them from pecking all the other chickens. I may talk about it on a different video. That's it, they all left. That's because they're not really that hungry. It's easy to grab one of the isobrowns, but the others, nope. Barnavilder, she's watching me. She's keeping an eye on me. Now, because of what I did to Malaikara, no more pecking of feathers. It all stopped. They're over there. <laughs> oh, can't touch them. That's Bella. That's Bella, and this is Ivana. That's Carmen. That's a single Wyandotte female that I have right there. You know, some of these breeds, they, they start laying eggs early, some later. It's been a fun day, and the day's still young. I'm going to do a whole bunch of other stuff around here, but I just want to wish you a great uh, 4th of July, and you guys have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. Hasta mañana. Bye.